What's up guys, how's it going? Hope you all are doing well, man. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a number of the best tips and tricks to help out new players thrive and survive in Red Dead Online. But before I get into that, man, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button because I make guide and tip videos all the time. And by hitting the subscribe button, it'll ensure you don't miss the next video. Also by hitting the subscribe button, it tremendously supports the channel and all the support definitely helps us out. So continue to subscribe and ride with your boy. All the support is definitely greatly appreciated. So now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the video. Okay, once you get done with the main mission, the game is gonna drop you right in a high populated area. It's gonna put your camp in a high populated area. So one of the first things you want to do is move yourself and move your camp. I'm gonna show you on the map. Move your camp, it's gonna put you somewhere like, game likes to drop people in roads and roads is highly populated and not a good area for brand new players. So move yourself and as soon as you can move your camp. You can move over here to Emerald Ranch if you want. It's a pretty low populated area, which is kind of, kind of an easier zone for newer players to learn the game. You can hunt a little bit easier, not that many players around. And it's an abundance of animals out there, so you can be able to hunt, learn the game, and so on and so forth. Moving up this way, again, there's not a lot of players, but I don't recommend because the climate is different. So you need different clothes to be able to survive up here. It gets colder, so you won't have the equipment that you need to be able to survive and thrive up here. But once you do have the equipment, you can move up here. It's a little bit quieter up here, and you'll be able to hunt and get acclimated with the game a little bit better. But this is not a good starting point. Around here, Emma Ranch is a good starting point. Over here, McFarland's Ranch is a good starting point. And kind of in this area, the desert does get hot, but you don't have many clothes to begin with once you start the game. So you'll be able to, to survive over in this area. So you want to move to one of those areas again because, like I said, it's easier for new players to get acclimated with the game. There are not that many predators and there are not that many players in, the, in those areas. So just move your camp. You'll thank me later. Also, if you're a new player, you want to make sure you have defensive mode on. Just go all the way down. You hit left on the D-pad, go all the way down to online options. Then you go down here to defensive, hit it on. It'll take about 30 seconds and it'll say defensive mode is activated. What that does is kind of pulls you out of PvP so... Uh, Veteran players can attack you and kill you in the game and that you can get through the game and start learning and get acclimated before you jump into PvP. So that's one of the second first things you need to go second. <laughs> that's another thing you want to do when you first start in the game. Okay, now knowing your horse is a lot you can do from your horse. You don't have to get off to feed your horse. You can pull up your wheel while you're while you're riding. Go over the horse, put it up right on the food, and it'll feed your horse while you're riding. So if you need to get out of dodge, you don't have to slow down to feed your horse. You can feed your horse right while you're riding. Riding, so that's a good tip, especially if you're in a jam and you need to get out, get out, and your your horse is losing stamina. Feed them real quick while you're riding. You'll be out of that jam in no time. Okay, knowing how to use the lasso, it, the lasso is a great tool, but you really got to know how to use it. It can be tough. So you want to equip the lasso, pick an animal. Which one of these guys I'm gonna try to get? Oh, they are booking it, man. I think it's gonna be you, buddy. All right, you want to throw the rope and then you want to, it's going to vibrate. So you want to pull it slow. Do not pull it fast. If you pull it fast, the, the animal's going to get loose. It's going to pull it slow. And then once you get to him, it's going to say kill. Take it out and it's going to be a mercy kill. What's great about this, it keeps the pelt level the same. So it doesn't damage the animal at all. And on top of that, when you have the natural roll, it does not upset Harriet. So she will not pepper spray you. Now, the lasso ropes works on a lot of animals. It does not work on like predators like uh, bears. So if you think you can go and lasso a bear or a cougar, you cannot. Um, you will just die. So <laughs> don't try that. But the lasso is a great, great weapon that you can use to help you with your hunting. Also, if you're fighting, you could throw a little lasso on somebody to slow them down. They get tangled up, pull out your pistol, shoot them. It's a great weapon. All right, when you encounter this die, this is Madame Nazar. She is the collector lady. She gives you the collector role. In order to get her, you got to pay us some gold to be able to get the kind of license that you need to be able to start finding collectibles. Once you find the collectibles, you bring them back to her and she'll give you a bunch of money and XP for returning collectibles to her. This is a role in the game. You get it. Like I said, you pay some gold, you'll get it. 
it is a great great role because it will help you max out fast so make sure when you have enough gold you grab the collector role now when you come in contact with to a, and when you come in contact with the collectible it'll glow like this and your controller will vibrate that's how you know you're near a collectible so look for the yellow flyer flies and feel the vibration go toward it hit your eagle eye you'll see it and this isn't it's a it's a rare flower so i pick it up the tarot card you just pick it up and keep it moving. And once you get all in that book, you take them back to Madame Nazar. She'll give you a bunch of money and a bunch of XP for completing the collectible book. Okay, when you're near other players, you'll see a little blue dot on your mini map that lets you know that that's an active player in the game. So just be cautious, man. Be cautious when you're around active players, especially when you're new and you're lower level. Because there are some friendly people in the game. And like any game, there are some not so friendly people in the game. And you want to make sure that you don't come in contact with those not so friendly people. So when you see those blue dots, just be cautious. Um, have your weapons ready or or be ready to get out of Dodge and just stay away from them. Um, you'll know if they're if they're on shenanigans because they'll come at you real fast and you'll hear some shots. Uh, if they're not on shenanigans, they'll approach you slow and they'll tip their hat and keep moving. So just be on the lookout for those things. If they give you any inkling that they're on uh, on nonsense, be ready to handle it appropriately. And if you're lower level, the best way you the best thing you could do is run. Because when you're defensive mode, once you get out of their range, that um, your dot will disappear and they don't but they won't know which direction that you went. So they won't be able to follow you. They also can't auto lock on you. So they can't auto lock on your shoes. They gotta aim. So as long as you're moving and swerving and dodging, you'll be able to get out of their range and then be able to keep yourself safe. Okay, so when it comes to towns, you're not going to be able to stay away from the town the entire time. You're going to have to go to town to do a couple of things, whether it be go to the butcher, go to the general store, anything you, to, to get to get a, a a bounty, anything you need to do. All of all of the amenities are going to be inside of a town, so you're going to have to go into town at some point in time. Know where you're going when you go into the town, so pull up your map, zoom in, know what you're going to do. If you're brand spanking new, you want to get in town and get out as fast as possible. So if I need to go to the butcher, I know I'm going to once I spawn in, I'm going to go straight to the butcher. I'm also going to know where the fast travel point is. So once you get into town, you, the fast travel little tower will be there. So know exactly where that is. So you can go straight to the butcher, get in, get out, and you won't run into the place. Because every town is going to be populated with players because... They're all in there using those four amenities. Veteran players are in there just hanging out, kind of <laughs> looking for some, some action. So you want to make sure that you get in and get out when you're those lower levels so you don't run into any smoke. So like I said, pull up the map, look at the town that you're going to go into, know where it is so that once you spawn in, it put a marker on it. Put a marker on it so that once you spawn in, you're going to go, you're going to know which way to go and go straight to that, that point, get in, get out. This is what the fast travel points look like. So when you find them in towns, you want to go to them to be able to, to travel to anywhere you want to travel. What gets you too close enough to it. Right now, everything is free. Normally, this costs money. But right now, this, this month, everything is free. So we can travel till our heart's content. Go anywhere for free. See, as soon as I get into town, you see those blue dots? People are already here. The minute that you come into a town, put your weapon away. Because if you accidentally shoot someone... You're going to have a bounty and the police are going to be all over you because you're in town. So just make sure you walk around with your weapon pretty much holstered so you don't accidentally shoot anybody. Because it's actually pretty easy to accidentally shoot somebody um, in town. Your lockbox is going to be so important because you can do a lot from your lockbox. You can get telegrams from your lockbox. You can collect anything that you bought you know, from the, from the booklet from your lockbox. Most importantly, you can pay your bounties. So you never have to go into town to go to the post office to pay your bounty because actually when you're going to town, they're looking for you. So it'll make it a little bit harder for you to pay your bounties when they're trying to arrest you. So it's easy for you to do it from your lockbox. So just remember that you don't have to go into town to pay your bounties. You can pay it from your lockbox right at your camp. As well as get telegrams, start call to arms. Anything that you buy from the, the book will come to your lockbox. Also, what's really important that a lot of people forget is that there is no pause in this game. Pulling up your satchel does not pause the game at all. Or pulling up the catalog does not pause the game. Even though I'm going through this catalog, I am still active in the game. Anything can get me, whether it be a wolf, a bear, another player. I could die reading this book. So just know there is no pause in this game. 
that's this does not pause it just makes you vulnerable if you're doing it out in the open so you want to make sure that anytime you're pulling up the catalog most importantly because it restricts your view make sure you pull up the catalog when you're in a safe environment like you camp. don't really pull out your catalog unless you're 100 percent sure that there's no one around you there's no one coming no one in the vicinity no animals because you could pull out your 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 pamphlet and i know a cougar just pulls up on you and now you're dead because you were trying to read your pamphlet. So again, make sure you're pulling that out when you are in your camp because you're pretty safe in your camp. And you can buy whatever you need to get it from Lockbox. Don't really pull it out when you're out in the open because like I said, there's no pause. No pause. Now, now the satchel is different because you can pull your satchel out while you're on a horse. You could be riding. I can still keep moving. I can get to what I need to get to. Get it quick and it doesn't restrict my view a lot. I can still see what's coming at me from the side. Just not in front. And I can still move. So, satchel is okay. Catalog, not so much in the open. Make sure when you come to your camp, you're checking out the stew and you're eating. Because this is easy food that you already have provided for you at camp. Um, because your weight is important. If your weight is off any way, shape, or form, whether you're too fat or too skinny, it's going to affect your health core. And you're going to lose health a lot faster than you would when you are normal weight. So, make sure that every time you stop in your camp, you uh, visit this little stew station, grab something to eat, and keep it moving. And when you're out in the wild, make sure you're eating so that you can stay a healthy weight. Your campfire is where you cook and everything. So you want to make sure you're utilizing the campfire so that you cook food. Because as you can see, a plain pork will restore my health. So now the benefits will show you right there. The items you're going to cook is going to tell you what if it's going to give you a perk or if it's just going to refill your health health on a basic level. Also, it can you can show the effects. And it'll tell you right here, right at the bottom, it'll, I can hit the effects and it'll tell me exactly what it's going to do. It's going to greatly restore everything. So if you want to know what the specific food that you're going to make is going to do, how it's going to benefit you, just hit that effects, scroll down, and you'll be able to see everything. And then make what you need so that you have ways to replenish your health while you're out in the field fight. When you have the opportunity, try to do your hunting and fighting on your horse hunting on your horse because when you have a scope it gives you a little bit of of high ground so it gives you a height advantage it, because you're up high on the horse it keeps you you know from from the grass or anything or the tall trees getting in your your view so you want to make sure that boom that you do it from on on horseback also the horse can creep in a little bit quieter than you can your horse also blends in as far as scent wise when you're on the ground you give off a scent and it'll blow that direction and then they'll be, be alerted and run. They're not alerted at all because I'm on the animal and I creep up, get a headshot if I want to right now. And now I got another three star animal. So when you're hunting, definitely try to do as much as possible on your horse. And when you're fighting, definitely, definitely, definitely stay on your horse back because it will give you additional XP by making kills on horseback. So you'll get regular XP for making the kill and then you'll get additional XP because you did it on horseback. And like I said, the horse kind of gives you higher ground. Your horse can take some shots and you can always replenish your horse's health on while you're on the horse's back. So it's definitely a win-win to do everything that you possibly can on your horseback, especially with the hunting and fighting because you want it, you want as much XP as possible. Also, another tip when you're fighting, you want to make sure that you've turned your scope off because you need your auto lock. Scope is perfect when you're hunting, but when you're fighting, you definitely need the auto lock. So you hit down on D-pad and then anytime, boom, you pull your pistol up or your rifle, it goes right into auto lock so you can drop them and take them down. So make sure when you're fighting, you turn that scope off so that you can pop them all off as fast as possible. Then when you're hunting, you can turn it back on by hitting the down. Boom. So you hit down, turn it on, turn it off. Another great tip is to hunt at night. Man, hunting at night is a lot easier than it is during the day. Because one, a lot of players are like, for lack of a better word, afraid of the dark because they assume that there are more predators out at night because the wolves are more active. But in actuality, there are more predators, predators active during the day than at night. So at nighttime, the animals are less alert and they spawn frequently. Like, look at this, this pack of dough right here. So I could pick out the three star dough, pop it off right now, throw it on my back of my horse. And keep hunting and when you're out here hunting you want to make sure that you have a rifle or repeater that has a scope the minute that you could throw a scope on it and throw it on it because it's gonna make hunting so much more easier for you to be able to use a scope than to just use the auto aim because the auto aim 
it's going to put it just anywhere on the animal and you don't want to hit it in like the stomach or the leg you want to hit it in the head every single time because a headshot means the animal's going down once it's only one bullet going into them and that'll keep the pelt level the same if you shoot it like in the stomach or in the ribs now you got to put an additional bullet into it and that's going to bring the pelt level down and we always want to keep the pelt level the same so if i got a three star i want to keep it a three star because i want to hit it with one shot so a scope's going to do that for me because right now i can put it right on his head and boom he's down and that's one shot now they're going to run but i'm not worried about that because i can hit my eagle eye and i can track them if i want to see two star kept it the same knock you to skin it pick it up but i like to pick them up whole because you get more for them whole than you do for them you know skinned so make sure you throw a scope on the weapons make sure you're using your scope you can hit them from a distance and make sure you're aiming for the head not any body shots because then like i said it brings the pelt level down also another huge tip is going to help you between knowing the difference between the predator and just a normal animal that's just out there is knowing the difference between coyote and wolves <laughs> wolves sound completely different than coyotes so just because you're out and you hear like a pack of sounds like wolves but it's actually dogs that are barking or look like they're they're circling together they're not actually wolves they're coyote and the coyote gonna run from you the wolves you're gonna know because because that red dot's gonna pop up and they're gonna come right after you so when you're out hunting make sure you know which is which when you see a pack of dogs just know that they're coyote and they're gonna run opposed to coming at you and attack because even when you fight them when they're in a pack, they don't really attack. It's the wolves that attack. So I remember when I first got into the game, that was pretty much hard for me knowing the difference between coyote and wolves. And every time I heard a dark bark, I was like, oh my God, it's a wolf. And I was like, I got to get ready to run. But it wasn't. It was a coyote. So when you're out here hunting and you hit those coyote, don't really worry about it. Well, don't be worried about them unless you're hunting them. So yeah, so make sure you're taking advantage of the dark. Like, look, there are animals over here. There's three stars over here. The animal over, animals over here. Like I said, animals are really active at night. Look. Those are horses, but they're more over there. Like if you're looking for, if you're trying to catch a horse, they're more over there. Like the animals are really active at night. So make sure that you're not afraid of the dark, man. You get out there and hunt, especially if you're trying to get some money or get some resources. Hunting at night is a lot easier. And you haven't seen any players out, right? You haven't seen a player run by or anything. That's an NPC. No players, right? The players are more active. During, during the day because like i said they're kind of afraid of the dark look at those and those are the coyotes i was talking about and like i said they're more afraid of you than uh, you need to be of them all right guys so that is it for this one hopefully this video was helpful i want to put out a video to give a bunch of tips to the new players who are coming into the game and helping keep red dead alive because the game is very much alive and definitely thriving so i wanted to put out another tips video to help those people be able to Get acclimated with the game, learn how to survive and thrive in Red Dead Online. So if this video was helpful in any way, shape, or form, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button because I make guide tip videos all the time by hitting the subscribe button. It'll ensure you don't miss the next video. Also, hitting the subscribe button supports the channel tremendously and it helps me to be able to keep making these videos to help you guys thrive in Red Dead. But yeah, that's it. Like I said, I hope it was helpful. Get at it, guys. And if there's any veteran players that have any other tips, that the new players can use go ahead and drop them in the comment section below as always so we can help everyone thrive in red dead online that's it guys i'm out of here i'll catch you all on the flip side hey outlaws if you enjoyed that video then check out this next video that's more red dead online content